good day everyone, Kermos here with another TCS video. Today I want to take a look at the new plane for TCS again, the long awaited F5E Tiger 2 has been released into early access on Friday. And the Tiger is of course a fighter I've been looking forward to since a while, as it is another third generation jet fighter, which is my favorite fighter generation. So far we had the MiG-21 BIS in the sector, which is a great plane, but there were few opponents in DCS so far that were on a similar technology level, they were either a lot lower or a lot higher. Well now there is the F5E Tiger, so I figured I'd make a quick video talking about some basics, a little bit about the plane's history and technology and how the plane flies in DCS so far, and then I thought I'd show you a quick online match in the F5. Of course, as the Tiger got released, everyone wanted to try some F5 vs MiG-21 action, and there was a well-populated server right away called Basis Vietnam Server, where you could fly the F5 and the MiG-21 vs each other as well as some other aircraft like the Huey for example. I hope that stays that way, as I want to try some more matches in it, both in the F5 and the MiG-21, and make some more videos in the two fighters going into a little bit more detail in the future. So I flew a quick match there, though I have to say that was right after the module came out, without looking into the aircraft systems too much first, so there are a few fails in that sorty. But I figured showing this first online flyout in the F5 would be fun nonetheless, maybe more so with the fails than without them. But first let's go over the F5 briefly. Now as mentioned the F5 that is produced by Belsum Tech went into early access on Friday, so it did just come out and it's still in beta, so there are a few bugs here and there, for example the Sidewinder field of view is very narrow at the moment, there's some other problems with the Sidewinder too it seems, but nothing really big, overall I'm very happy with the F5 so far. As I have been with the Gazelle, which was the first early access module that I got in DCS. The plane looks great inside and out and flies great and all systems work with only some minor inconsistencies that one would expect from a beta in the first release version. About the aircraft itself, the F5E Tiger was developed in the early 70s as an advanced version of the earlier F5A Freedom Fighter and was always meant to be a comparatively cheap and lightweight fighter aircraft primarily meant for the export market to provide countries allied with the United States with a, at the time, modern fighter that was more affordable than the more sophisticated F-4 Phantom for example. The primary Soviet counterpart to the F-5 was of course the MiG-21, which similarly to the F-5 is also a lightweight design and has some comparable characteristics, though the two fighters are still pretty different. And of course those two, the F5E and the MiG-21 BIS, are the primary competition for each other in DCS, at least till we get some more fighters in this generation. So we finally have a proper third generation fighter matchup in the game, which I hope gets extended upon further in the future. Now comparing the F5E and the MiG-21 BIS a little bit, I would say they are at a somewhat similar level of combat performance overall, however they both have different advantages and disadvantages when compared to each other, which you of course can then take advantage of if you know about them. For example, the F5E has mostly the lead when it comes to sensors. Now the F5's radar is not that great, just like the MiG-21's is not very good, but the F5's seems to be slightly more advanced than that in the MiG-21. But the big difference is with the radar warning receiver. The F5's radar warning receiver is quite a bit better than that in the MiG-21 and provides much more information about threats. The radar warning receiver is an important tool in an environment with many radar guided threats both from the ground and the air and helps to get some beyond visual range situational awareness if the enemy has his radar on, even when your own radar isn't that good and mostly turned off to stay hidden anyway. Now the MiG does have the edge in air to air weapons, it can carry a lot more missiles, up to 6 R60 infrared guided missiles and a larger variety of them both of the infrared guided variety as well as some shorter range semi-active radar guided ones, though their range is limited by the limited radar range. While the F5 when it comes to air to air missiles can only carry two sidewinders on the wingtip rails, as well as the cannons of course, but we talk about the weapons of the plane in a bit more detail later. Now both the F5 and the MiG-21 have a reputation of being good turners and maneuverable in a fight for a third generation fighter. The F5 will most likely have the edge in a straight up turning competition against the MiG, though how much of one we still have to see when we get more F5 vs MiG-21 fights done. 
The F5 has a slightly higher wing loading dynamic, but it has leading edge extensions on the wing roots, which increase the angle of attack the F5 can pull significantly beyond what the fighter with a similar wing loading without those extensions can do. Those wing root leading edge extensions you will also find in a much larger and more advanced variety in the F-18 Hornet, a later Nosrop design, which is also known for being capable of very high angles of attack, and other modern fighter designs, but the F-5 pretty much started that trend. But keep in mind that flying around with high angles of attack also slows you down fast. The MiG-21 with the Stealth wings will however also fly with high angles of attack in a turn fight. Now, the F5 also has an automatic flap system, which, when on, will extend the flaps automatically depending on speed and angle of attack, which also helps with maneuverability in a turn fight. The Tiger has both a leading edge as well as trailing flaps, so in front and aft of the wing. So that makes the F5 a pretty good dog fighter. Make no mistake though, the MiG-21 is no slouch in that regard either. Especially when flown by an experienced MiG pilot that knows how to get the most out of the Delta Wing design. As I said, both the F5 and the MiG-21 have a reputation of being good turners for a third generation fighter. Keep in mind though, that once you go up against fourth generation fighters, things look different, as maneuverability and turn rate played a much larger role in general, again in this generation, and advances in aerodynamics and engines allowed for more maneuverable planes. And I think there might just be a few surprised F5 and MiG-21 pilots when we get the F14 module from Leatherneck, for example. Now, one of the downsides of the F5 are their relatively weak engines, so it is pretty slow for a fighter of the time and the thrust to weight ratio is slower than that of the MiG-21 BIS, which has a much stronger engine. So keeping your speed up in a turn fight isn't easy in the F5. The engines also have one of the known issues of the F5 better, and currently won't suffer from compressor stalls for example, but that will be added in the future. Well, let's go over the F5's weapons quickly. Starting with the guns, the F5 has two 20mm M39 cannons in the nose, with a pretty good ammo supply. The M39 is a revolver cannon, which was developed for the United States Air Force to replace the older Hispano-based designs, which never proved very reliable in US service. The M39, though, was not used in too many fighters, as the more powerful M61 Vulcan Gatling gun took the place of primary fighter gun. Now, an interesting thing about the gun is that the F5 is equipped with a dual stage trigger. The first stage extends the gas deflectors in front of the gun barrel, as well as a chute below for the spent casings, and when the second stage is pulled, the gun fires. If the deflectors are fully extended, of course. That is something to get used to, because if you don't extend deflectors in time, your shot is delayed, which can cost you a good snapshot, and that did cost me a few good hits. The point of those deflectors is to keep the gases away from the engine intakes, and the chute for the spent casing is flush to the plane to decrease drag when the gun is not in use and only extends together with the deflectors when you want to fire. Now the gun can fire high explosive and armor piercing rounds, so it can be used as air targets and also slightly armored ones. Now, for the air-to-air -air weapons, other than the guns, the F5 only has two sidewinders on the wingtip rails, and in DCS you can fit the old GAR-8, aka AIM-9B, which is the same you get on the F86 Sabre, as well as the newer AIM-9P and P5, which are export models of the sidewinder. Now the P5 has all aspect capabilities, so it can be fired at the target from any angle, but with the current small seeker field of view it's very hard to use, and in general has so far not proven terribly useful. As a matter of fact, it seems that the sidewinders are not entirely implemented yet. We will see how it looks though after the field of view is fixed, which according to Belsum Tech should be soon. The F5's radar isn't powerful enough to guide the AIM-7 Sparrow missiles, and there aren't any smaller semi-active radar-guided missiles in the USAF inventory to use, like the R3R on the MiG, so it's heaters only for the F5 in air-to-air -air combat. Now the F5 can also carry air-to-ground weapons and a pretty good amount of them for a small plane like this, but weapons delivery of those is pretty much manual. The Tiger can carry 70mm FFAR rocket bots, which by the way also got a nice new 3D module for the Tiger, with aerodynamic nose and tail fairings that fly away when you fire. When you carry 4 rocket bots and activate all 4, with a short interval you can get close to 80 70mm rockets in under a second or so out, which is quite fun. 
In the rocket bots you can carry the usual selection of rockets, high explosive, heat, smoke and so on. The smoke rockets might be useful in a forward air controller role. I hope I can build a scenario like that for a cooperative mission in which I plan to use the F-5 like a F-100 MISTI forward air controller plane. Other than rockets, the F-5 can also carry Mark 82 to Mark 85 bombs, Snake Eye and Normal, as well as older pre-Mark 80 bombs, cluster bombs and GBU-12 laser guided bombs. So the plane does have precision guided weapons, but it can't paint the targets itself of course, so you need a jade deck or a 10 c painting the target for example. Not sure yet which laser code they are set for. I will look into that later, hopefully also in a co-op mission. I think it would be fun flying the F-5 as a light strike fighter, not like you need the underwing pylons for air-to-air weapons. Well, and this is a bit of an overview of the plane. I plan on doing some more in-depth videos when I get a few more flights in, but for now let's take a look at the multiplayer sortie in the F-5. So here we are. As I played this I just downloaded the F-5 and did a quick test flight or two and then took a look at the server browser to see if by any chance there are already F-5 servers up and there certainly were. This is the Basis Vietnam server which had about 30 people or so on it already fighting F-5s versus MiGs. So I figured I'd join in as well and try a quick multiplayer sortie. So this is, as mentioned, my first flight in the F-5 and therefore I forgot a few things. I looked over the alpha version of the manual before the plane came out, so I know a few things at this point, but not all. For example, I forgot to turn on the radar running receiver and was wondering throughout the sortie how disciplined all the pilots are with their radar use. This server is at this point set up to provide quick dogfights of F-5s and MiG-21s, so after taking off from the airfield we don't have to fly very far just up a bit north or northwest to get into the combat zone. So I don't really have to search for enemy planes, there's always a furball going on between the two airfields, which are somewhat close together. I set my gun sight to air-to-air -air 2 mode, which is a close range dogfight mode, not bothering with the missile mode, which would allow to lock the sidewinders on a radar target a bit further out. For two reasons. First, the sidewinders are, as mentioned, not really great at the moment, and the F-5 doesn't have an IFF interrogator, so you don't know if a target is hostile or not beyond visual range, unless the AVEX or, for example, or ground control tells you. But with dogfights going on here all the time and F-5s and MiGs mixed together, you have to get close enough for a visual ID anyway before you fire on anything. Now I just arrived in a combat zone when two fighters fly past me towards our airfield and I turn around too in case they were enemies to give chase. And I look around behind me to look for targets that might be coming my way from that direction and as soon as I do so I see a missile launch behind me. I pop countermeasures and go evasive and the missile misses. Looking around while I do my evasive maneuvers I can now also spot the attacking plane, a MiG-21, not surprisingly. Now my evasive maneuvers slowed me down a bit and it looks like the MiG might overshoot and I can slot in behind it, but then I recall that when in a fight with an enemy plane it might be a good idea to have one's weapons active and I forgot to switch my air-to-air -air weapons from safe to active earlier so I have to do that now. In the process I lose sight of the MiG though, but not for long, I can see it to my left and I go up in a barrel roll towards it. But I can see that the MiG will get the firing solution first, so I roll around and go down, planning to go up in another barrel roll towards the MiG after that and engage in rolling scissors. But it turns out this is not necessary. The MiG goes down and I guess I'll claim that as a maneuvering kill. What I think happened here is Delta winged planes like the MiG-21 have somewhat unique star characteristics, which can surprise a pilot if he's not used to it. Well, time to look for more MiGs to play with, and this time with the weapons active, or so I think. We have an AWACS plane up at the moment giving information, but with the fast-paced fight and many planes joining and leaving it's hard to get a proper picture. Still, I turn towards one of the contacts and I can see something in front further to the northwest closer to the enemy airfield. I turn my radar on quickly and see two contacts on it, a MiG and the F-5 fighting I guess, but of course I can't be sure just from the radar. Now since I see them already, no need to keep the radar on and I turn it off again. And I switch my gun sight to close range air to air mode again. Now I close in on the two, planning to slot in on the rear one, and as I get close enough to identify them visually, I can see that the rear one is indeed a MiG behind an F-5. The MiG was apparently doing an attack on the slower F-5 and then climbing away, and I want to get behind it. 
Now I pull up a bit as I'm faster than the maneuvering MiG at the moment and I don't want to overshoot, but just as I do so I see another plane coming in behind those two and it's another MiG-21. This MiG flying low over the water and I try to get behind that one. I of course don't want to get behind the leading MiG right in front of the other one. I come down from my inclined loop and go after the lower flying MiG, which was flying along the coast at first and is now going inland. It's hard to see here air to air visibility being something that still could be done better, but the MiG pulls up and starts to turn towards me. I at first keep my radar off hoping I can sneak in behind the MiG, but he is turning all the way around and coming right at me. I turn my radar on and acquire target to get the radar assisted gun sight, but I misjudge the closer rate and the MiG flies past me before I am ready to shoot. So I turn around after the MiG which in turn also turns around hard towards me. I go for a quick head-on burst, but I'm worried about being hit in a head-on or even colliding, so I pull up after just a very quick burst to get out of the way and then turn after the MiG again. Now we have a friendly Tiger coming in and also going after the MiG, I don't know if it's the one I saw earlier. Now the MiG is turning towards me again, I could see that I won't be able to get a decent chance for a burst here, so I started to turn around right away in the direction the MiG will head after passing me, and I go around and turn around in another inclined loop passing the MiG again as I come down, and this time the MiG passes above me before I turn after it again. Now there are more fighters in the area now, so I'm not even sure anymore at this point if that MiG is the original one I followed first or if I changed to another one in the confusion. But in any case I turn after it again, however I lose sight on it for a second in the ground clutter, and I slow my turn down a bit trying to find it again. Now when I do so the MiG is coming in from my left and apparently tried to fire a heat seeker at me, but we are below effective range and I am again not sure if that is even the original MiG or another one again. But in any case I reverse direction and go up in a roll to the right towards the MiG and then end up above it and then I can slot in behind the MiG as it turns to the left. Now I am not 100% sure at this point if he still sees me, the F5 is hard to spot from the front, so I turn my radar off again, do not give any warning on his radar warning receiver if he indeed does not see me. Now the leak continues straight, so I figure I try to go for a sidewinder shot in this situation. Getting a lock with the narrow sidewinder field of view is a bit difficult, but I do get a good tone, press trigger and nothing. Turns out earlier when I dropped my drop tanks I forgot to turn the sidewinder rails back on so my missiles are not active. The fact that I can still hear the seeker is I'm fairly sure another problem is the sidewinder in the beta. The MiG meanwhile turned around again and I try to get a quick snapshot on it as it passes in front of me, but I forget about the delay from extending the deflectors before I fire the gun, so I am a bit too late with my shot. A pity that could have been a good hit while the MiG was passing in front of me. Now turning around I can again spot some more planes in the area, it seems the MiG went after another F5 behind me after passing me and is now pulling up from that ITEC and I go after it. I turn my radar back on to get my radar assisted gun sight and then as the MiG is coming back down I slot in behind it. I roll around as the MiG levels out and I press the radar acquisition button, which will make the radar automatically acquire a target in front of the plane's nose and provide the firing solution for the gun. But getting the pipa where I want it proves difficult in the tight turn close to stalling nonetheless, and the delay from the deflector costs me a good hit again. Now the MiG meanwhile goes up after another F5 and is attacking it with guns as well. And by the looks of it the MiG gets a hit on the F5 and damages the friendly plane, but after that I finally managed to get a good solution and get a few hits in of my own in two bursts, and the MiG after that makes a run for it. Now a sidewinder passes to my left fired by the damaged F5, trying to get some payback for the damage, but the sidewinder falls into the water behind the MiG and I have trouble getting a lock with my own sidewinders. I at this point have the uncage button for the seeker bound to the wrong button on my stick, making getting a lock a bit harder. A pity because this would be a very good example for why missiles lead to fighter designs being designed with more focus on maneuverability again than was the case with pure gunfighters of World War II for example, despite some thinking the opposite would happen. The MiG is faster and out of our gun range pretty quickly. That was one reason why with gunfighters speed is king, as you can use it to get out of a tough spot and then return with a higher energy state you get from being faster. That's why Inverter do a faster F6 Hellcat, for example, beats the Mermaneuver Zero. 
but with missiles in a mix you can fire after an opponent trying to use his speed to make a run for it and make disengaging from a fight much harder. So maneuvering became more important for fighters after the introduction of missiles in comparison to World War II gun only designs, not less, if you get your missiles to work anyway, which I failed completely at doing in this case. And as mentioned, I think the Sidewinders do need a bit of work in the beta of the F5, not just the low seeker field of view of the Sidewinder, but they also seem very slow when you do fire them, but beta is beta and we will see how it develops in the future. Now I stopped chasing after the MiG as he was getting close to his airbase and being on the server the first time myself, I have no idea what if any air defense the airfield might have, so I'd like to stay clear of it. Now getting a bit low on fuel by now and having used my afterburner a bit in the fighting, I start to think about disengaging myself and heading home. Which turns out to be not that easy, as there are still quite a few planes around fighting each other and I don't just want to pass by a friendly and leave him alone if he is in trouble. So I go after a few more contacts that seem to be fighting, but without getting into fire range of another enemy fighter for now. But after a bit I can spot another MiG F5 bear fighting and I am chasing after the MiG as they pass me. But when I look back, I get the feeling I saw something behind me, but I'm not sure if I really did or if I just imagined it. I can see some cannon impacts in the water in front of me too, but I'm again not sure if there's something behind me or if the impacts in the water are from the F5 and MiG in front of me fighting. This is making me a bit nervous. I'm not really sure if I saw something behind me, but I don't want to leave the F5 in front of me alone because I imagined something behind me either. Turns out though I wasn't imagining things after all and the next time I looked back I saw two missile launchers behind me. I tried to evade and launch flares but I'm too late. So this is it for this sortie. Well that was my first online flyout in the F5. I thought it was a fun flyout even though I did not result in any kills unless you count the crashed MiG and I don't know if the MiG that I hit with my 20mm rounds made it back to base or not but I assume it did. In any case, I had a good time and I hope I can bring you some more F5 and also MiG-21 footage in the future from this server or a similar one, when I have a better grasp on the aircraft systems. Overall, again, I really like the F5. There are some bugs, it is a beta, but nothing really bad and I feel it looks great for a first early access release. And maybe I could also show a certain German that jet fighters do indeed have souls. Well, that's it for this video. As always, I hope it was entertaining, thanks for watching and maybe I'll see you next time.